You are listening to the Pro Audio series, presented by Life Vantage. The Elite Panel features Herbert Harris, Sharice Matthews, Betty Lou Hyatt, and Tony Krashewitz. This audio presentation includes income and lifestyle claims, including, but not limited to, income earned, potential income of distributors, purchases made from income, such as homes, cars, vacations, etc. A complete earnings claim statement, which includes a summary of income earned by the distributors, can be found at LifeVantage.com. We are going to start off, we're going to warm up your vocal cords a little bit this morning. Our first question is going to be your name, where you're from, and what you did before Life Vantage. So we'll start off here with my good friend, Herbert Harris. Wow. <clears throat> <laughs> I almost forgot who I was, but I just remembered I am a Life Vantage Elite Distributor. Herbert Harris from Wilmington, North Carolina. And before Life Vantage, I was a retired attorney. And some people say attorneys never retire, they just lose their appeal. Hello, everybody. I'm Betty Lou Hyatt from Jacksonville, Florida. It's great to be here. Hello, I'm Sharice Matthews from Southern California. Some of you remember me as the duct tape lady, and last night, the Uber driver was driving us back here, and he said he's, he's raising his five-year-old daughter, and he said, good thing for duct tape, because it's the redneck babysitter. Oh, I guess I'm a redneck. Tony Krashewitz, St. George, Utah. Woo. Uh, been, been with Life Vantage six and a half years. In my previous life, I call it, I used to be a long haul truck driver and a relocation engineer, AKA I moved people's household goods. Awesome. Perfect, well done. And they're telling the truth, those are their names. So absolutely, again, pull out your notebooks. Okay, we're gonna start. With Betty Lou, hi, Betty Lou, you've been now with us for over four years. You reached the elite ranks in 33 months. So we're gonna go back to the very beginning of your life vantage business. How did you get your business going? And was there a pivotal moment when you finally said, this is when things are gonna start taking off? Wow, thank you so much. I hope Gabe and Jill are here already because they're part of this story I'm coming. Okay, good. So. Um, this is really powerful to have this microphone in your hand. So we started out with home meetings. That's the way we launched our business, and I feel really strongly about that. Um, my enroller, Rita Townsend, she had a home meeting I went to. We, I duplicated that. We just kept duplicating and having home meetings, and so that's how we got started off. But what I want to go back to is a pivotal moment that really changed everything for us. So I was a pro five. Uh, we were in a kind of a privileged place in Jacksonville because we had Gabe Pearson and Donna Deegan doing our home meetings as a team. So they would do it as a, at, together and we would have them in our homes and that would draw a crowd. So we were in a great place. I'm a Pro 5. I'm about to go to Pro 5 Summit. I had scheduled my daughter to have her first home meeting in Orlando. Now that's two and a half hours from where we live. And I wanted it to be really good. So I invited Gabe to speak and presented that at her first home meeting. He said he would. Yeah, yeah, it was all set. Well, I was getting ready to go to Pro 5 Summit. I get a call from Gabe and he says, uh-oh, Betty Lou, Jill said she scheduled a colonoscopy for me the day of Kelly's meeting. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it. And I said, oh, that's okay. You no, know, I think you can do it. I said, <laughs> I said, it's really, I've had one before, it's not that bad. Charles can drive. <laughs> Charles will drive us to Orlando. You can sit, sit, lay in the back seat and sleep, and it'll be fine, then you can do the presentation, right? <laughs> so he said, I don't know, I don't think I can. So I went to pro, and he pretty much nipped it and said he couldn't, and he's never canceled a meeting. So I was like, at Pro 5 Summit, in a panic, okay? I've never done a presentation. I wanted my daughter's presentation to be great. I'm begging everybody at Pro 5 Summit. There's, there are a lot of y'all out there that remember this. I met Gary Stern there. I said, would you, I found out he was from Melbourne. I was like, who's from Florida? Is anybody from Florida in here? So 
Gary Stern was from Melbourne. I'm like, that's close to Orlando. Gary, can you do a meeting? Well, he was booked, okay? I think Fred Graves was there. I found out he was from Tampa. I was just meeting all these people from the first time. I'm like, can you come over and do a meeting for my daughter in Orlando? And he was booked. Rita Kaderi was, I met she and her husband at that event. She was like, you're doing that presentation. I said, I don't think so. I'm gonna try to get somebody. I called Sherry Custer in Colorado. I said, Sherry, any chance you're gonna be in Orlando next week? <laughs> So she said, I don't know, I really am not, Betty Lou. I got to, or then I started looking at the big blue. I found Lynn Nay was doing meetings. I never met her. I called her. I said, Lynn, any chance you can do a meeting for my daughter? She said, I'm already booked. I'm like, but she was really nice. I was like, oh my gosh, I had to do the meeting. It's the best thing I ever did. <laughs> Everybody enrolled as a customer. I got a new distributor out of it. I started doing presentations, and next month I went pro six. So do presentations. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna head over to Sharice Matthews. Now, if you've ever met Sharice Matthews, she's the combination of happiness, excitement, and, and three shots of Huckleberry Green Grape. I mean, she's just enthusiastic as you can be. Sharice, has there ever been a moment that you've questioned your ability to build a long-term successful business? Heck yeah. Thank you, Colton. Absolutely. There have been times where I have definitely questioned my ability to build a business. And, um, you know, I have to say, I have been a paid elite pro eight for three years. I'm not complaining about that, but I don't care what level you are. You want to take it to the next level. You want to get there. And so there was one time in particular that sometimes you have adversity. And it put me literally under the covers. I had a couple of my legs go away. It was called attrition. It's called that, right? It's gonna happen in this business. And a couple of legs went away. I'm not saying it's gonna happen to you, or maybe, but it did. And it literally put me under the covers. So there I was, under the covers, with fear, self-doubt, all the usual suspects, right? And there was my little dog, Honey, lying there, right there, right with me, a little loyal dog. She's eight pounds. She's a little mix of, of lovely, that's what she is. And she's sitting there, and I looked up at her, and I'm like, Honey, I think you're depressed. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'm depressed. At least I'm on top of the covers. I said, no, I think you are, and there's only one person I can call right now in this moment. It's a lead distributor, Marcy Steiner. For those of you that don't know, she's a brilliant animal communicator. And I said, I said, honey, we gotta call Marcy. Her little ears went up. She's like, yeah, go ahead, call Marcy. I'll tell you how busy you've been the last couple of weeks. I'll tell you how slammed you've been that you couldn't do a three-way call, right? And then it was like, I'll tell you what you're, 15 presentations this month have looked like. Go ahead, call her. Okay, so you know you've hit rock bottom when you're arguing with your dog about what she's gonna say or not say in her therapy session. <laughs> seriously. So then I thought, I gotta, I gotta make something happen. I gotta get out of this bed, seriously. So I thought, Mel Robbins, five second rule. You have five seconds, have a thought, action. Hold on, I need just one extra second, six seconds. And I'm like, nobody counts down from six down to five. So now I'm a, I'm a trainer, I was a fitness trainer. I'm like eight or 10, I'm like, okay, 10 seconds. I need 10 seconds. Here we go, 10. I have to do some laundry, nine. I gotta go grocery shopping, eight. Maybe I'll just redecorate my office, seven, six. I mean, I just kept going and I'm like, oh, this is not working. And then I thought to myself, okay, the Einstein quote, nothing happens until something moves. Uh, okay, this is entrepreneurship, you guys. This is entrepreneurship, and entrepreneurship, especially in this endeavor, to be a successful network marketer, they're one percenters. And one percenters, it's the one percenters that know how to control their thoughts and eliminate fear. It's the one percenters that know how to think for themselves. It's the one percenters that know how to give their heart openly right, and not expect anything else in return. It's the one percenters that know that they can take control of their own self-worth and don't need anybody else's approval about how good they are. 
It's the one percenters that know how to kick their own ass when necessary. Right? And it's the one percenters that get what they want because of it. So I, ju I jumped out of bed, had my phone, I'm making calls, you gotta go into action. And right then, one of my friends called, who she's here today, Katie Vanderveen. And she, I hadn't heard from her in about two years, and she was calling to solicit me for her financial services. Katie, what you didn't know that day was I really did not need financial services. I needed psychiatric services. <laughs> and she's a distributor today. And what I want to say about this is that when you move, they move. You move, they move. Perfect. Thank you. See, I wasn't lying about the three shots of Axio. Right there. Okay, we're going to TK, Tony Krashowitz. Tony, these 7,000 people want to know, how do you know where, when, and who to work with within your organization? Well, to start out with, you know, everybody starts at zero and gets signed up and starts building a team and bringing distributors on. And I'll be, I'll, in the beginning, you're just looking for any action you can create anywhere, aren't you? And so we, Clint and I would call us the, the meeting police. I mean, if we smelt a meeting, we could make a meeting happen. I mean, we literally get with people and just go knock on a door. Who do you know? Who do you know? And so in the beginning, it was just trying to work with anybody and everybody. Does that make sense? Trying to create some action, trying to build a team. And so as they start rank advancing and get to Pro 4, Pro 5, Pro 6, your group starts to get bigger. And so now when you have a lot of people in your group, can you be everywhere? You can't. It's, and this is where the duplication, this is where you got to empower other people to start to, to start taking ownership of their business and growing. So today, when we look at our organization, we have roughly about 36,000 people, around 5,000 distributors. You can't be everywhere. And so here's how you can tell where to go work and who to work with is the ones that you see coming to events. You see that hunger in their eye. They're calling you. If you're calling people, you know, you're, you're kind of doing a little bit of chasing. You don't need to be doing that. The people that want to do this business are going to get a hold of you and ask for help. They're going to want to be hungry. They're going to be wanting to know what to do. Is that, does, this, does, this, does this make sense with everybody here? Okay, so that's how you know where to work. Now, sometimes I've gone on a hunch. You know, sometimes I've just had a feeling hit me that I should go somewhere and just go turn some stones over with somebody, and it's turned out a couple times, and there's been other times I've done that and nothing happened. But if you don't go look, are you going to find? So I'm telling you, you've got to engage. You've got to be active. You've got to be going into your organization. You've got to work with the people that want this. When you look at this event here and see all the distributors here, we know who's here, you guys. We know exactly who's here. It's right in our back office. Isn't that cool? You can see all the people that are attending events. And I love going and talking with people and having additional meetings and finding out who wants to go to work today. So starting Monday, who wants to go do this thing? Thank you. Head note to Herbert, my man Herbert. Herbert, you're Pro 8. You are Pro 8 here at Life Vantage. Even having reached that level here at Life Vantage, have you changed your approach in building your business? Absolutely. You know, as a Pro 8, you, you can't get, number one, you can't get here by yourself. And so you have to become the leader that you know you need to be. You know, we always say the speed of the group is the speed of the leader. And so if your group is not going the way you want it to go, then there's one place to look in the mirror. Number two, you can't win the Kentucky Derby on a donkey. <laughs> I mean, you can dress them up, you can put blinders on them, a saddle up and everything. But you cannot win with a donkey. And by that, I mean everybody doesn't want what you want. Everybody doesn't want success. I mean, there's some people that are just, uh, they, they're homesick for the poorhouse. <laughs> and you can't change that. I think that's one of the things that we try to make people into something that they don't want to be. And so recognize that everybody is who they are. The, the one percenters are the one you're looking for, really the 10 percenters. Everybody may not want to be a, a pro 10, but if you get 10 pro sevens, you'll be a pro 10. Third point, you can't win the Kentucky Derby riding two horses. Now you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> 
And sometimes it's not another horse, it may be a distraction. In other words, you have to be focused. Whatever you focus on grows. If you focus on the problems, they get big. If you focus on the distractions, they get huge. If you focus on the excuses, they get incredible. So you have to be totally focused. Once you get the Pro 8, you should be assured of one thing, that this thing works. There's only two questions we ever have, does it work and can I do it? And then finally, you can't raise the dead. In the last 2,000 years, only one person has come back from the dead. <laughs> and a whole lot more have been born. <laughs> so once you know where the person is at, love them, leave them, and go give birth to new business, new people who have new dreams. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Betty Lou, we're heading back over to you, and I like the way that you put this question, so I'm gonna make sure I read it exactly. As with every network marketing business, there are good days and not so good days, peaks and valleys, times of tremendous growth, and times when things are kind of flat. I understand the year you got involved was a year of tremendous growth when we grew from around 38 million to over 126 million in revenue. From there to over 200 million, and we have been floating around that number for a couple of years. We know that the company is headed for another huge growth spurt. So share with us what has helped you stay the course for these four and a half years. So we're in a good place, aren't we? So to, to answer this question, I need to just tell you a little bit about me, okay? And, and I wanted to explain for especially the people that are new in here, and I'm sure we've got a new, lot of new people, right? How, why I'm here and how I got here. So I um, got involved with this business not for the money. My husband's made a great living for us. I've been privileged to be at home raising my daughter. She's now 35. And I didn't get in it initially for the money. So I'll tell you a secret. The reason I got into it is I wanted to join the party. Yeah. <laughs> My friend Rita Townsend invited me over to her home to hear Donna Deegan. I wanted to hear Donna Deegan. What is this all about? So Gabe was there. I heard all this great information. I looked at all these people that are gathering around Rita at the end. They're all going to do this. I'm like, I am not missing out. So I had major FOMO. Y'all know what that is, right? Fear of missing out. We learned that from Mel Robbins. So that's why I joined Life Vantage when it comes right down to it. Uh, the product, obviously, I knew I was gonna take it. I wanted to be a distributor and shop from my own store. But when I really got down to it and Sherry Custer and I were having a conversation, I wanted to join the party. I love fun. And I told my husband when we looked at this, if it's not fun, I'm not doing it. Skip Campbell says the same thing. He mentioned that to me yesterday, and that was what I said from the very beginning. So that is my initial reason for joining this, this company. It's been a great party. It's still going on. It's getting bigger and bigger. But let me just tell you what happens if you stick with it. So we had a party, right? We don't call them parties. So we had a home meeting. We're inviting people. We're inviting our friends. Let's get the group together. Let's have fun. Well, I had a home meeting and a lady named Stacy was invited, but she couldn't come, so she invited her parents. They came, I knew them. They got really excited, met with Gabe the next day. I thought they were gonna sign up as a distributor. I'd only been in a few months. Well, it turned out their daughter, Stacy, that didn't get come to the meeting, she's the one that got excited. She said, you've got to share this with my hairdresser. She'll love this. So I shared it with her hairdresser, Mary, she enrolled that day at Starbucks with Gabe and I. That led to Laurie Llewellyn sitting in Mary's chair at the hair salon. She saw Pro Tandem on the shelf. She asked Mary about it. We met together over lunch. Laurie saw the dollars, the money. She knew she had missed out on an opportunity in the past with another network marketing company. She wasn't gonna miss this one. She had FOMO as well but she saw the money, so she got in for that. Then Laurie said, I'm gonna
going to have my college roommate have a meeting for us. She'll join and be a distributor. She won't do anything, but she'll lead us to people. She doesn't need this. She's got plenty of money. She's got a great life. She's not going to want to work the business, but she'll lead us to people. So she had a meeting. In walked Sharice Holcomb, Sharisa. She's a pharmaceutical rep. She had seen the ABC primetime back in 2005. She came to that meeting because she wanted to get that product and be a distributor. She was the first one in the door. After that, Sharice enrolled Ruth Ann Nettleton. She's our second Pro 7. She's backstage coming out after this. She was a PA. She wanted to get in for her own reasons about the product. Ruth Ann enrolled a business owner in Gainesville, Clint Asbell. That he enrolled one of his customers who enrolled Evelyn Monraj. She's our new Pro 7. So that's the way it happens, okay? So it's not who you know, right? It's who you don't know that's potentially gonna make you hundreds of thousands of dollars and allow you to help a lot more people. So we have more people that we've enrolled. I have friends that I've enrolled, Bobby Giannini, Inez Browning, I mean, so many people, but I can't name them all, but I just wanted to share that one story about how one person that was not even a person that came to a presentation, she's the one that ended up leading us to all this, and I told her she needed to get in this business, but she didn't, so she missed out. So don't miss out, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna head back over to our personal trainer. Obviously, you work with people who are trying to personally develop themselves, better themselves. In your opinion, what's the most important personal skill set, set excuse me, to develop, to build for long-term growth? So if you think that we're living in the technological age, think again, because we have and always will be living in the communication age. And a communication, yes, we can communicate through technology, but we have to really work on the communication skills that we have with people. And the best communicators in the world, they use their ears instead of their mouth. And my dad, I, my dad said, he goes, look, in order to be interesting, you need to be interested. And so what I want to really impart on this is about asking questions. And I'm going to point something out, and you're going to notice yourself doing this all day after this. But how many times do we do this? Oh, you've got three kids? Oh, I've got three kids. I would never do that with you because you have like 52 kids. <laughs> but... <laughs> Right. Or, oh, you went skiing? Oh, I went skiing. Or you went to, you know, Hawaii? Oh, I love Hawaii. You're going to find yourself doing that. See how many times we do that because we want to connect in that way. Instead, how about, oh, you've got three kids? Wow, what are their names? How old are they? You know, what ages? And, and you get talking. And so that as you start to ask questions and understand the needs of the person sitting in front of you, when it gets down to the point of, you know, enrollment, it becomes very, very easy. Let's make that college tuition less painful. Let's get started. Right? Let's, let's pay for those braces. Let's get started. Let's restore your health. Come play with me. Right? So then as you start to listen, and you know, I know all of you have seen The Bachelor. And I know, don't say that you have given up on your TV for Life Vantage business because The Bachelor's been running for like 20 years now, way before Life Vantage. So you've all seen The Bachelor, haven't you? So it's like 25 girls trying to get the attention of one dude. And what do they do every single time? It's like, this is what we do. It's, it's me, me, I and me, and I and me, and she, and me, and I, I and me, and I and she. And, and it, all they have to do is the first girl that asks the dude one question about him, they win. I just don't get it. Between all the tears and the I and me and me and I and I and me, ask questions because when you ask questions, you let your ears do the communicating. Thank you. Perfect. All right, back down there, TK. Tony, you've been in Life Bandage now, I think, since almost the very beginning. And in that time, you've gotten a lot of experience. You've worked with a lot of different distributors. Of those individuals who you've seen succeed at Life Bandage and not, is there different characteristics for those who are successful versus those who aren't successful in building this business? Uh, yeah, yes, there is. And um, really, the first thing that comes to my mind is commitment. You know, people are committed to the process. They're committed to what they believe they're doing. 
and they go to the meetings, they go to the trainings, they're all, they're all in. And that, that may take a few steps for that to happen. It took a few months for me to cement that in for that to happen. It was a process of seeing the information, get excited about the opportunity, FOMO, fear of missing out. And then when I attended my first Elite Academy, it became crystal clear that I was in this thing for life. I, I knew I was gonna give this everything I had. I knew I was gonna get out of my truck and I knew I was gonna change the direction of my life. I didn't know how long it was gonna take, but I was totally committed to making that happen. So commitment's the first thing that, that comes to my mind. And I can give you a, a little secret ingredient and I know all these elites, and then there's some of you that I don't know, maybe pro sixes, pro fives that are come up through the rank, but they have a common denominator and that's that they made a decision that they're gonna do this and they have a why and a purpose. And it's a deep driven purpose, it's not a shallow one. And when I go around doing trainings and stuff, I always say, hey, let's have a why test. You know, and everybody's like, oh, let's do the why test. And it's, you know, I, I've heard people say when, you're, when, you, when your why makes you cry, you've got a really good why, and I don't necessarily agree with that, because then all of a sudden I've seen people have that going on, and then they're like gone two or three months later. And what happened to the person that was really emotional and looked like they're all in? What happened to them? They disappeared. And really, your, your activity level determines where your why's at. So if your activity is really low, and maybe you're not going to the meeting, you're not sure you're going to go to the lead academy, you're, you know, you're just not sure if you're plugging in, your why is out of adjustment. And so you need to go back and revisit that why and, and tune that baby in, because once you have that thing dialed in, you'll run through brick walls. Uh, all I had to do, because for me, my why is to get out of the truck. I put about 3 million miles in. I was just tired of being gone from home, tired of having someone else control my time. I just, uh, I was just, I had enough of it. You know, I just had enough of it. And so all I had to do is tape on the dash of my truck, how bad do you want out of this truck? And that's all I needed to read. <laughs> that's all I needed to see. And I was back on the phone, no matter how beat up I got or how much fear I had. I didn't care. All I had to do was read that. And I was back on the phone. I was doing another meeting. I was doing whatever it took. Uh, to, pro to progress in this business and get out of that truck. So here, I'll just give you a couple things. First, identify your why, but it has to be personal to you. And the second thing, surround yourself. Man. Have that thing all around you so it's reminding you all the time. And when you can put those two pieces together and it works, you'll literally run through brick walls and build this business. Thank you. Okay, we're heading back down to our former attorney who's told us how not to win the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> we're gonna now have you talk to our new distributors. And what would you say is the most important thing for a new distributor who has little network marketing experience? Well, you know, Colton, a lot of people come into our business and they've been in other network marketing companies unsuccessfully. You know, I often say we've been in 18 different companies and 15 of them we made friends and lost money. <laughs> so you meet a lot of people like that and so they'll join the business and the first thing I ask them is, you know, what, you know, I get a little information about the company and I generally I'll know a little about it. I say, well, what three things kept you from being successful, kept you from achieving your goals? And when they start sharing it, sometimes uh, one group says, well, you know, the company didn't do this and the company didn't do that. Well, automatically I know a little bit about that person. Every now and then you meet a person who says, well, you know what, I just didn't give my all. I wasn't focused. I let distractions pull me away. And I just didn't put in the time and effort. Now, that's the person I want to work with. Number two, I asked them, I said, well, if they come from that perspective, I said, well, now that you're in a new company, what will you do differently than the last time? Because, you know, if you do the same things uh, to duplicate the same behavior, you're going to get the same results. So what would you do different this time? And, you know, it's amazing. People are expert psychiatrists on themselves. <laughs> I mean, they can, and they'll tell, man, you know what, I, I, you know, I think this time I'm gonna really take it serious. I'm gonna lay out my time and work it. A lot of times at that point, I realize they just don't know the basics. So, okay, well now, third, when you commit to be coachable and follow my lead for the next 90 days, and if they say they will, then they're in. And then what I do at that point, the, the fourth piece then is, Twofold, one, to revisit their why. Clearly, if you've been in a lot of companies, you're looking for something. So may, whatever that why is, to reaffirm it. And the second part 
is to help them do a schedule. You know, you can do this business full time, you can do it part time, but you can't do it sometime. And so let's lay out your schedule. And once you do that, I know how I can work with you and we can get it done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Betty Lou, heading back over to you. What do you think are some of the things that slow a person's growth? And what advice would you share for those people in this room who perhaps aren't growing as fast as they would like? Well, first of all, I wanted to just say one aside, okay? First of all, can I just hear from my team out there? Because I can't see anybody. Yay! Thank you so much for, for what you've done to get me up here. And I know I mentioned a lot of names and, and I couldn't mention all of you and I just want to thank everyone. But the biggest person that's kept me in it is my husband. So if it wasn't for Charles, I couldn't have stuck it out, okay? So I'm really thankful that I have a husband that is so supportive and is with me, with, with me in this all the way. And if those of you that don't have that, just bring a friend in or somebody that'll be supportive to you because it really, really is essential, I think. So, but okay, so how do you get your business growing? Well, I think the things that happen that keeps it from growing is you're either talking too much or you're not talking enough. You're saying too much. You're not supposed to be the message and the messenger. You're just the messenger getting them to the information and then bringing a third party in. And then there's those people that say, I want this. I really want this. I know what to do now. I got it. And then they don't do anything and take action. You have to take action. It can't just be wanting it, right? We've heard it's not net wish marketing, it's network marketing. So you just have to put some work in and some effort. Um, if you're not teachable and coachable and you want to do it all your own way, I was told from the beginning, you'll have a certain amount of success doing it your own way, absolutely, but you probably won't get past pro four. So if you want to get success in this company, follow what? The proven plan. Follow the system that the company has laid out. And then the other thing is daily, 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 okay? So I find out for myself, if I haven't called or contacted someone each day, it's, you know, it, it drains you, okay? So you gotta have your batteries recharged daily, whether it's prospecting, talking to some people, forming some new relationship, putting, adding to your database, making phone calls, having a presentation, but daily, daily activity is really, really important. So um, all those things come together, and if you want success and you want to grow, just do it daily, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Cherise, your third question. What's one piece of advice to truly build for long-term sustainability in a life vantage business? Thank you, Colton. Um, I really believe it's, it's uh, personal responsibility because personal responsibility, we all want this. We're all given the same products. We're given the same opportunity. And how do some people make it to Pro 10 and other people stay at Pro 1 for five years? We're all given the same opportunity. But it's about personal responsibility. And, uh, you know, I, as a fitness trainer in, in my past life, I feel like it's been, I always would say, okay, if you want the ripped abs, it does not matter how much I could be in your face screaming, let's go, let's go, let's go. You have to physically do it yourself. It doesn't matter how much I do that. You are the one that has to physically do it. And, and then I would say, I'm not the one that has to wear your bathing suit. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> nonetheless, you have to do it. You have to take personal responsibility. Okay, and so one thing that I found that really worked for me was this. I have this little notebook. It's a little spiral notebook. Uh, my team knows this. I talk about this all the time, and I actually just keep track. And every single day, I write my volume down on it. And I look at that volume at the previous month before, and I just make sure on that day that that volume has gone up. We're in growth. We're in business, aren't we? And so if it has not gone up, I mean, we're working, we're doing it, we're helping, everything else. But it's up to you to do something about that. And so what made me think of this little thousand, thousand dollar rule is what I call it. And I always make sure that I try to, to help duplicate this is that you guys, 
If you personally, think about this for a moment, if you personally moved $1,000 worth of business a month, okay, and your whole team just moved personally $1,000 of business a month, okay, think about for a moment, if you are a realtor, if you're a dentist, if you owned a restaurant, anything that you do, and somebody said, all you have to do is produce $1,000 of business this month, you'd probably be out of a job, wouldn't you? People would laugh at you. And in this, it's like, really? $1,000 moving $1,000 of, of true science and, and you, know, every, you know, signing up maybe one distributor, whatever it may be? That's what you have to do. My sister owns a restaurant. She has to bring in $4,000 a day just to keep the doors open. That's like business. You guys, are we in play group or are we in business? We're in business. Well, last night it felt like play group, but... Really, I mean, it is. And so what I would say is, you know, take personal responsibility on your business because a lot of times, listen, this is personal growth. We're all here to learn. But sometimes, you know, it could turn into a very expensive party. Ask yourself, is this a really expensive party that you keep coming to? Are you making money in your business? Take personal responsibility so that learn from this and then apply the knowledge you get from here and take action. So I really believe that's the key. Perfect. Thank you. All right, Tony, I'm going to do, do some role playing right here. Let me get into character again. All right. Okay. Tony, I've been a pro five for two years, and I just can't seem to get to the next rank. I still do my presentations, but my team won't do it. How do I get to pro six? I'm not really an actor, but that's, that was my best impression. <laughs> that's the question, go ahead. You bet, first thing I would do is you're my teammate, right? Absolutely. I would sit down and get your calendar out, and I'd find out if you're really doing your presentations. Because sometimes, that makes sense, it does, doesn't it? Because we can all say, oh, I'm doing everything, I'm doing the work, I'm, I'm in there, but nobody's doing what I'm doing. I don't have any duplication going on, so it must be starting from somewhere. <laughs> and it's a great place to look in the mirror at ourselves on that one. So say, so let's get your calendar out. Let's see what you're doing. Are you really getting those 15, let's call it more like 30 presentations in? Because you're wanting to go to elite ranks in this company, right? Uh, 15 is a good benchmark, but you really want to accelerate above that. So let's see if you're doing your presentations. And let's see in your organization who's really duplicating. And let's see who's really in with you. And I'd start, that's where I would start first. But it's really, it's the inactivity. It's the pretending of doing work and showing up to meetings because unless a presentation is put in front of a brand new person, nothing's gonna happen. It's just, it's just the way it is. We can, we can come to all the meetings, we can listen to all the, the, the training, we can do all those things. That's like a supporting cast to the presentation in front of a new person because that's really where the rubber meets the road and where the business is built at. And so when you can look at all the things that are going on in a Pro 5 or Pro 6 business and there's no new people coming and getting in front of the information, it's stagnant. So how do you change that? Well, first of all, here's the thing that everybody hates to hear, and I know I didn't like it when I called Tyler up one time because we're all like, yeah, it's just not growing fast enough. What's going on? He says, you need to go enroll five more people. I need to go enroll five more people. Doesn't that make sense? You got to take control. What do you do is you go keep enrolling. And this is a trap when you get to Pro 5, uh, 6, and 7 as we stop enrolling. And we get in where we're just working on a group and we fall into management mode. And then what's going to happen in the whole group is they're going to copy what you're doing. And that's going to trickle down in your whole organization and the whole thing's going to come to a screeching halt. And so that's what I do. I'd start out with a distributor that's asking me that question and I'd break it down with who's in their group wants to do something now. But let's you and I go, let's go get another five people in this business and let's get going. Let's go show the rest of the team how to get this thing done. Let's do it. Well, let's have him do it. All right. We're heading back over here to Herbert to wrap things up with our final question of this panel. You talked to our new distributors, but now I'm gonna have you talk to another group of distributors for those who have been around for a while. Herbert, how do you motivate distributors who have been around for a while to get back on the right track? Woo! <laughs> I tell you, you know, we, you can't push a rope. <laughs> And sometimes that's what we, we try to do. So the first thing I want to know is, do you still believe? You know, when folks say, well, you know, I, I'm still in the game, <laughs> that means you don't believe. 
So the one thing I, I like to reaffirm, I said, well, you know, there are only two questions. Does this thing work and can I do it? Do you agree that Life Vantage is the greatest opportunity in the history of the world? And when they say yes, then I said, now what are you willing to do to make that opportunity work for you? And it's amazing, people start writing it down. You know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. So I say, let's, let's look now at your why. Let's revisit your why, and let's look at another side of that why. If life vantage is not the opportunity to take you where you wanna go, then what's the alternative? What else are you gonna do? You think a little overtime might help? <laughs> you know, they're only gonna pay you just enough to keep you from quitting. And so maybe you need to revisit your dream and spend some time. You know, if you don't do this, then how are you gonna change your life? Some people don't wanna change. And it's good to know that. So are you happy with the way you are? Uh, not really, well then let's get together. So once we've done that, we go back to, you know, this is the process of duplication. Pull out that planner. Oh, you don't have a planner. Now we know. <laughs> Pull out the list of presentations that you did last month. Oh, you didn't do any presentations last month. And so, you know, as we often say, liars may figure, but figures don't lie. There is absolutely nobody that can say they did 15 presentations a month and they didn't make any money. And so at that point, I look them in the eye and I say, now, are you willing to do this thing? Are you willing to do four things? Number one, take responsibility for your business. To say, if it's to be, it's up to me. Yes. Number two, are you willing to be self-determined? I don't wanna have to call you, you call me every day. It's your dream. My dream is happening. I got so much money, my credit cards have credit cards. <laughs> Number three, are you gonna be self-motivated? Are you gonna ring your own bell? Are you gonna get up every day fired up and ready to roll? And then they say, yes. Then number four, are you gonna be self-functional? Are you gonna learn the skills necessary for success in this business? And when they say yes, I look them in the eye, shake them in the hand and say, welcome to Life Vantage. The best is yet to come. Let's hear it one more time for our lead panel. Amazing job. Well done, fantastic work.